What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Inside Lines podcast. I'm your host, Atoya Burleson. And I am Tia Averill. Coming up a bit later in the show, we'll be chatting with Rachel Sachere, former semi-pro basketball player. We'll also be getting into our hot take on what to leave behind in 2022. (laughs) But first, Tia, it's been a crazy week. Listen, that is an understatement, okay? Yeah. Um, I'm sure everyone knows by now, and everybody's been praying for Damar Hamlin, um, which was one of the most traumatic things I've seen in my life. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, So, okay, so Toya, so you, and it was interesting because I was watching the the IG and Twitter handles of um, some other wives, both current and former. former. Mm -hmm. Um, What, like, what did you think? Um, I didn't know what to think. Because I really Mm -hmm. didn't for sure know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, But when they showed the replay um, of DeMar collapsing, that's when I got scared. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Mm -hmm. when you first saw, you didn't see that, right? Everything was moving just so fast. And But when they showed that he collapsed and then I saw the players' faces, that's when I was like, oh, my gosh, Mm -hmm. this is not good. and I just started praying. That's all I could do is just start praying. Yeah. You know, so I was not watching the game. I just mm-hmm. got all of the instant text messages, you know, from friends and stuff that were watching the game. Like, what the hell mm-hmm. just happened when? And that's when I pulled it up or whatever. So I didn't actually watch any of the replays. I did not see him collapse or anything, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I stayed on um, Twitter where I was just, like, reading about it. And then, of course, my husband was watching the game and stuff like that. But when I say that is, like next level trauma mm-hmm. and we talk about it all the time um or we brought this up like during our first or second season but watching the game like the first time after our, our husband's retired mm-hmm. and how relaxing and actually like enjoyable it was mm-hmm. like it brought back all of those feelings of like watching the game them taking all these hits and then you like really not knowing what's going on yeah. so like i i distinctly remember The first time Cliff collapsed and didn't get up immediately, like literally wasn't moving that I could see, you know, Mm -hmm. and then had to go to the hospital. And then when he did it again, you know what I mean? So it Mm -hmm. was just like, yo, they they really, we know they put their lives on the line every time they step out there, just how violent that game is. But Mm -hmm. I was just sitting there thinking, I'm like, his his mom was in the stands. Thank God. And then thinking about... She, right, because Lord forbid she would have been, you know, watching this from yeah. afar, like how, you know, whatever. But every time I like listen to the head coach talk about the assistant doing CPR on him and stuff like that, I cry. Yeah. Or watching those players, I'm like, it take a lot for them guys to cry. Like that shit was yeah. scary. It really was. And, you know, you, you think about, to your point, you think about everything that our men do and- to everyone else watching, it's just a game, mm-hmm. right? They don't think mm-hmm. about like, you know, everything that these men go through. Like it's it's a lot, it's a lot on the body, it's a lot on the mind. Um, yeah. And so I hope that fans watching really understand that was one of the scariest moments ever in NFL history, but there's minor moments of this that they go through on a weekly basis Mm -hmm. and they need to understand that and to give them grace and not to make them a number or a fantasy pick or something so minute that really doesn't matter at the end of the day. And kudos to the NFL for canceling the game and doing the right thing throughout this entire week and really getting everybody everybody together and getting everyone to just really focus on him. Because could you imagine someone saying, go back out there and play? There's no way. There is well, but they did. No way. But they did at first, right? So, really, kudos to those players because you know Josh Allen or us finding out. I don't know if Josh X, Josh Allen um, said it himself or another player. But Josh was like, if one player say they don't want to go back out there, we ain't going back out there. Kind of thing, like them standing with their brother, <clears throat> with their brother in that um, mm-hmm. regard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also want to you know just thank you and give all the kudos to the fans too for 
his GoFundMe situation. Yeah. Because that $2,500 goal is over $8 million at this point. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You know? It's a beautiful yeah. thing. When, when we all rally together and really support one another, it, does, it makes such a huge difference. And this is one of those moments where you see humanity come mm-hmm. together and really uh, that brotherhood and that love, just, you know, love, love conquers all. And this is yeah. one of those moments. So <laughs> kudos yeah. to y'all. It was beautiful. It really, yes, and, yes. and you know, we're praying with uh, for Damar, his family, Mm -hmm. Um, everyone involved um, even for those players that are still going back out there now having to do their job we're praying for everyone involved so absolutely all right enough about that girl let's get into this week's hot take all right guys it's time for this week's hot take Tia what we got Okay, so we are about a week late, but it still matters because it's still happening. Okay, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but this week we are chatting about things to leave behind in 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a there was a lot happening in 2022. I definitely thought we were going to hell in a handbasket. Okay, but there's a few things that I'm like, okay, y'all, we still doing it, but can we leave it? All right, so Toya, (laughs) you go first. What's something you think we should leave in 2022? All right, so for me, I'm going to go with trends. Trends to leave behind. Not necessarily always trends, but things to leave behind in 2022, I do not want to see anymore. And they're all Bs. You ready? (laughs) 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 Okay, here we go. (laughs) This is what we leaving behind in 2022. Baby hairs, bonnets, and BBLs. Leave them in 2022, okay? Okay, I'm about to disagree with you on all of this. <laughs> no, we leaving it all behind. Let it go. Time it's out. over. It served its time and its purpose. <laughs> Let's move on in life, okay? I don't want to see people time gluing out. on baby hairs. I don't want to <sighs> see bonnets in public, okay? I don't want to see it. Speaking okay, from uh, a black woman... <laughs> Okay, I don't want to see bonnets <laughs> in public. It's just so atrocious. And well, three, no more BBLs. It's OD out of control. And just seeing all these women, I'm tired of hearing about the, the sad sob oh, stories man, about what chest. happened after they chose to do this to their bodies. Leave it all behind. Thank you. I That's cannot I with say. you. Well, first <laughs> off, Monique, okay, <laughs> we fly internationally and it's more than 10 hours. I'm wearing a bonnet, okay? A bonnet, a hair no, scarf or ma'am. something. <laughs> No, ma'am. It is not that serious. One day of flying without a bonnet will not hurt you. It you will not gonna, hurt you. You go catch me. All the times you we went land. out and you partied and you got drunk and you fell asleep without that bonnet, bonnet you survived. You flying on that airplane for 10 oh hours, you will gosh. survive. Leave them at home. That is hilarious. Thank you. That is hilarious. Okay, so the only thing that was on my list that you had on your list was the baby hairs. Because... I do agree with you. Them baby hairs are out of control. And even watching the um, the TikToks of the people buying the, the baby hairs um, on Amazon and stuff like curly baby hairs to glue on. So number one, I'm sitting here like, well, first off, don't, you ain't got no kind of random weave around your hair, your house that you could just like glue on if it was that serious uh, <laughs> it's not though none of it's that serious that's the whole point to these none of it's that I serious cannot with you and Ooh, okay bbls okay i'm gonna say the overdoing of the bbl like when you just go too far left where you can't whatever but that was funny i was not ready i was not prepared for that let it go let it go y'all <laughs> let it go <laughs> What about you? Okay. What you leaving behind? What you leaving so behind? So I did. I did have baby. So hair baby hairs. There. Okay. I did, but then also okay. So we get eyelash extensions, and don't look at mine right now because I need a feel. But all those people that doing like the uh, snuffleupagus, snuffleupagus, yes, Listen, Sesame Street, the, wop wops, wop yeah, where it's wops. too much, where yeah. we can't see each other. Okay, yeah. like that. That. I'm like, you're doing too much, number one. And then you can't, not only can you barely open up your eye, when you open up your eye, it's red. It's like, you can't tell that your eye is irritated at that point. Like, yeah. why? It's let's just move why? on. Why? Right? Right. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Okay. And then the other uh, the other thing I'm going to leave behind are the, the annoying and like not so funny TikTok trends, i.e. 
or let me give you an example. The example of like um, the people telling their parents that their favorite uh, celebrity or whatever died. And the celebrity oh, didn't die. Yeah. yeah. Stuff like that where I'm like, that shit was not funny. Not funny. That was not funny. Yeah. And I know we ain't going to be the dead horse because everybody already took him through the ringer. But um, Angela Bassett and um, Courtney Van's son, when they said Michael B. Jordan died, I'm like, even that's, worse. They already, like Angela already had a co-star pass away. Why would you? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so those, the TikTok yeah. trends that are not funny. It's very insensitive. It's very insis- insensitive. And exactly. like. It's not okay. I agree with that. Get it together, kids. <laughs> Parents, get your kids together. <laughs> Listen, but I can't believe your Shout out bees. to Angela because she was on it. She was like, mm-mm. I, shout out to her. That's a real parent. You know, because some things you can't control. Yeah. The kids yeah. do. But she rectified it real quick. So yeah, shout she out to did. Angela Bassett. She did. Mm-hmm. She did. <laughs> yeah. So okay, that was hilarious. So those are our top three that we are all leaving behind in 2023. Or sorry, 2022. in 2022, we leaving all that back there <laughs> and we're starting fresh in 2023. It's don't mean come up with something crazy for 2023. Let's just leave all the crazy back in 2022 and let's start fresh. <laughs> let's do some time in the stings, okay? <laughs> exactly. All right, y'all. That's it for this week's Hot Takes. Coming up next, our chat with Rachel Sacheray. She hails from Central California. She's a former Division I semi-pro basketball player. She also started a blog called radliving.com, which we will get into a little later. She is the mother of two toddlers, bless her heart. And she's married to number 21 of the Philadelphia Eagles, Andre Sachere. Rachel, welcome to the show. How Hi, are ladies. you? ladies. Good morning. Okay. Thanks Thank for you so much us. for joining us. Thanks for having me and giving me a mom break. I'm excited. I know, you know. <laughs> Listen, we're going to try and help as many women as we can, okay? I love it. I love it. <laughs> How long have you guys been with the Eagles? Um, this is going on year two. My husband was with the Indianapolis Colts two years ago. He got okay, cut. Indy. Yeah, he got cut the day after the rosters came out. So he had made oh, no, 53. Indy. Mm, yes wait made what? the 50 crazy story he made the 53 uh-huh. man roster for the first time in his career and uh-huh. he was cut the next day and philadelphia picked him up within like 12 hours and he was on a flight from indy to philly and we moved out there and we've been here for two years now crazy that seems the epitome, meant to be the epitome yeah. of the nfl <laughs> yeah right i'm like such a, a so, roller coaster of emotion Hell it really yeah. is because i okay so i've heard of people you know not making the team oh, yeah. but in my mind i'm thinking once that 53 man roster is set mm. it's set mm-hmm. unless they're trading people or you know what i mean yeah. yeah yeah and that's the you know i'm so glad you brought that up because that's like the biggest thing that i use my platform for is mm-hmm. to one educate people who aren't you know seeing the everyday day-to-day life of nfl mm-hmm. athletes and their partners and also mm-hmm. how many different rules and how many different changes mm-hmm. that can be made within the season after mm. the season um after the roster comes out before the roster comes out during training camp there's so many things that could yeah. happen and yeah it's very very unpredictable yeah just unstable very, it is extremely yeah so talk about that journey for him because i know you talked about <sighs> you know before he came to philly what happened but talk about yes. his journey Absolutely. Um, So my husband was an undrafted free agent. So from the bat, he was an underdog. He went to a mid-major college. We met at San Jose State. It was D1, but it's a smaller school um, in the Mountain West on the on the West Coast. And he was undrafted, went to Houston and he was he played on the practice squad. So that is where that's what I'm familiar with. We're we're Mm -hmm. on the practice squad a lot. And he was Mm -hmm. on Philly is team number six for us. So he was on and off Mm -hmm. practice squads. Six teams through. But you also had a newborn when um, your husband's NFL journey start. Did you ever get to a point where you were kind of like, okay, wait a minute, what are we doing? Like, Absolutely. we going to keep pursuing this, this, or what are we going to do? Absolutely, especially with the way his journey was. Um, he wasn't on, we, mm-hmm. didn't, we never had longevity. Like, that's never been a part of his journey. Mm-hmm. So I think the first two years, he had gotten cut. Two days before Christmas, while we were in North Carolina, I had a baby by myself. I was stuck out there. He had to fly to Arizona. He was going back to a team that had cut him previously. And I was just like, Mm. I need to figure out what I want to do with my life. That was like my light bulb that like, 
yes, I love being a stay at home mom. Yes, I love being a wife, but it really, really put into perspective that this industry is so short. And I constantly, we were constantly putting our eggs in one basket. And that was just like my first light bulb, like, okay, I'm going to figure out what I want to do. So right after that, I went back home and that's when we started doing long distance up until two years ago. So I was working. Um, I would come and visit him when he was on different home teams. Is home is California, central California in Fresno. Um, and so that's okay, where his okay. family was. So I had help there. My family was an hour and a half, two hours away in Bakersfield. So I had my village and that's where I stayed. That's where I worked. I took care of my baby and I visited my husband when I could. But that is how I coped with that is I, I kind of just like put my head down and I was like, he's going to do what he has to do to make a living. And I feel like it's my turn. And so that's how yeah. I coped with that. Mm -hmm. And what did you decide to do? What did you decide so to get into? So my bachelor's degree is in child adolescent development. I kind of joke with people like now that I am a stay at home mom while we're living together in Philly. I was like, I basically went to school to learn how to be a well-rounded mom. <laughs> and even then, <laughs> even then four years of going to school to, you know, learn about the development of children. I still don't know everything and they still throw me for loopholes all the time. But um, I became a registered behavioral therapist for children with autism. So I did that for a year. And then after that, my degree is a focus in like community programs. So I basically learned how to run mm -hmm. like nonprofit programs, grant writing and things like that. And so I worked at an LGBTQ youth space in Fresno, California. And I was like their health and wellness coordinator. Oh, wow. That's yes. awesome. So did you go into the, were you going into the homes? Um, no. When you, um, did yes. you travel? So when I was a... When I was a registered okay. behavioral therapist, we had a center mm -hmm. um, where we would have mm -hmm. clients, mm -hmm. but I also did home sessions. So I would have kiddos at their homes. Um, and then for the LGBTQ plus youth space, we had a center and that was like their safe space. So that's where they would come like after school, before work and um, stay there late night. Some of them were even homeless. So they would be there until 8, 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we did activities. Mm -hmm. We did workshops. Um, they could eat there. They could do homework. They could play video games. Um, so, yeah, that's a little background of it my. It truly was. A, that's a safe uh, space for sure. For absolutely. Kids. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it, it has me thinking because you I'm gonna go off on a complete tangent. Totally. But <laughs> you know how we like we have like this instability amongst the kids in these schools and you, you're seeing more and yes. more kids like get to a point of like just snapping. Yes. Right. Like we just last week had a shooting exactly. at a school mm -hmm. 15 minutes from yes. my house. Oh, right. Wow. Um, but when I when I think about the you being in the 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 LG, LGBTQ safe space, yes. I'm I'm probably you I fine. messed up those you letters. Y'all know what I yep. mean. But <laughs> um, the safe space for their youth, like what types of issues or what types of comments and things mm -hmm. of that nature did you hear from the kids on the type of support they needed or like yes. when I guess when should parents mm -hmm. like. Yes. Tap in no. sooner. You know Great what I mean? question. So one of the workshops that I basically mm -hmm. like headed, I took under my wing and I said, I'm going to make something out of it was our parent and family uh -huh. support group. So a lot of times it's kiddos, their families, one, they have no idea what their child is going through. Half of them don't even know the terms that their child is throwing out at them. And so what we did was mm -hmm. we were able to create a safe space for parents to just ask questions. A lot of them were like, I don't know what's derogatory. I don't know how to correctly say this. I don't know how to identify this. I don't know yeah. how my child identifies. And a lot of them were parents. A lot of them were grandparents, you know, that had custody of their grandchildren. Um, some of them were even caretakers. Some mm -hmm. of them were the head of um, the household in um, like uh, shelters. So a lot of them would come and basically just ask mm -hmm. for education. And that's like the starting point is as soon as you get over the hump mm -hmm. where like you're, you're not scared anymore to ask questions, that's where parents can be the best support system for their kids. And it starts at home because you can't control what mm -hmm. your kids are going to go through at school. You can't control what kids and teachers are going to so say true. to your child at school. But when you're at home and they have that foundation, like my parents listen to me or my caretakers, they listen to me. They understand what I'm going through. They understand, you know, these transitions and challenges in my life like they get it. Yeah. And so when they're equipped at home, it's a lot easier for them to go out in the world. Kind of like you said, like, you know, this kid goes to school and for whatever reason, he feels the need to condone violence amongst his own former classmates and teammates. And it's like. Well, what happened right. at home? Mm -hmm. And no one's discussed yeah. that yet. So I'm curious yeah. to know, like, you know, what's yeah. going on. But 
I feel like it's so important for parents to like, we need a support group too. And a lot of times it's simply parents yeah. just not yeah. knowing. That's so mm -hmm. true. And I think about what you're doing and you're just having that fulfillment, you know, in your job yeah. um, with parents and with kids. Totally. Was it hard to let that go? And do you miss that? Absolutely. I do. And it's kind of funny. Yeah. I, I joke with my husband all the time. I'm like, you know what? When you retire, like, it's my time to shine. Like, you get to be home and be a stay-at-home yes. dad. And I kind of think after having my own kids, I'm not quite sure if I want to work with other people's kids yet, but I definitely do want to work in the nonprofit, <laughs> the nonprofit sector. Um, I do want to, you know, help different programs in any way that I can back home in Fresno or even Bakersfield, mm -hmm. uh, but preferably with the LGBTQ plus community. And how did you, how did that become your passion work, working with that group? So my senior year of college, we, it was basically, we had to pick somewhere and it was like our final senior capstone class where we wanted to fulfill like, um, X amount of hours um, to graduate. And so mm -hmm. I initially I initially only chose it because it was close enough to campus so I could ride my scooter from practice to work, you know, and I ended up falling mm -hmm. in love, falling in love with it. And mainly because it was just so many kiddos who just had nowhere to go and just growing up being a leader. And yeah. like, I've always been a leader and I've always, you know, stood up for people who didn't have a voice. And I feel like being a part of the LGBTQ plus community and like being that voice, I'm able to be a voice for them when their voice yeah. is a little quiet. And that was definitely like an inspiration for me. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. I love that. Thank I really you. do. But we got to go back yeah. a little bit because before you were doing this, you were doing something else that's pretty yes. amazing. Yeah. Talk about talk about your. <laughs> so you know they think it, one thing about wives um, when they think of us, they think of you know our men as the athletes, but you were an athlete. Tell everybody I was. what you did. <laughs> yes, so I played basketball. Let's see, I'm 27 now. I played basketball for uh -huh. 22 years of my life. Um, and I'm born and raised in an athletic family. I'm the middle child. So my older sister yeah. played division one basketball. My little sister played basketball at Cal Berkeley. Um, and so we, yeah, we all grew up playing basketball. I played AAU basketball in SoCal. So I was in Long Beach mm -hmm. all the time, Compton area. And that's where I yeah. spent my weekends. Um, I got a full ride scholarship to play basketball at San Jose State in the Bay Area in San Jose, California. And that's where I met my husband. And I played all four years. I was a shooting guard. I was a captain my senior year. Mm -hmm. And after I graduated, so a lot of people don't know this, but I got pregnant a week after my college graduation. So I didn't get to have, you know, a hot girl summer. I didn't get to, you know, think about playing again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, um, I have to, you know, raise a human now. And so I missed it. And so when my mm -hmm. husband played in Detroit, there was a semi-pro women's basketball league there. And I was like, my goal oh, my is God. to just have one of my kiddos be able to see me play. Because, you know, when I was in college, I graduated. Yeah. And once I had my son, I kind of thought, you know, being able to play semi-pro or go overseas wasn't an option for me. So that's when I chose to play mm -hmm. semi-pro. I played for a whole season. And it was basically like the equivalent of the NBA G League, but like for the WNBA. Um, oh. So, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't it's like, you know, pro you. wasn't WNBA, but it was more like a developmental league for the WNBA. And mm -hmm. I met some amazing women. Uh, one of them was also a mom. She had twins. And so she was kind of getting back into the swing of things playing again. So I was able to, you know, just follow her lead and. It was awesome. It was fun. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I kind of just got my fulfillment. And then I was finally at peace with like, you know, retiring. <laughs> yeah. You, you didn't, you didn't want to continue another a season. Um, I thought about it and then my husband ended up getting traded. We went from Detroit to, do we go to North Carolina? Yeah. We went, no, we went to Arizona. Yes. So we went to the Cardinals. And so once he went from Detroit to the Cardinals, there wasn't a team in Arizona. So I was kind of done after that. I want to talk yeah. about something that, because I'm thinking about, you know, we talked about your husband, what he went through going through all these different teams, but absolutely, let's talk about it as a, as a woman, because you have your kids, mm. right? And yes. you have these relationships that you forge with other women yes. only to be yes. ripped away, right? Uh, yes. And Nobody ever talks about this. Yes. <laughs> and, and we're ripped yes. away from people that you probably forged amazing relationships with and it's mm -hmm. like, it's gone and you have to start absolutely. all over again. Talk about that. Yes. Right? So... I would say at the beginning, it definitely made me a lot more closed off mm -hmm. because of that. Okay. And I wasn't going out and being 
I wasn't going out to the, the wives events. I wasn't going out of my shell to meet them because I was like, I've been on so many different teams. Every single time I get close to someone, I just have to move and I don't ever see them again. And so for a long time, I just refused to interact mm -hmm. until I realized, you know, people often talk about, you know, the dangers and the negatives of social media, but I was kind of able to use that just to just stay connected, stay connected. with everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I use my social media now is like all the wives that I've met along the way. Mm -hmm. um, we still check in on each other. We still reach out to, you know, each other. And so now that, you know, I'm a lot more comfortable, I'm going to events. And I'm trying to, you know, host my own with wives and meet them and be a lot more social um, because, you know, I'm not afraid of moving. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. We all have to end up moving and going to different teams eventually, you know, most yeah. of us. And so I've just tried to use social media as a way to just stay connected yeah. um, and not be closed off anymore. That's awesome. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's mm -hmm. interesting because I think like our generation and the generations after, like we yes. are the like in terms of percentages, we have moved away from home way more than like our parents and, and aunts and uncles and stuff. And so Absolutely. you think about being put plopped into all these different cities, you really do have to create that, yes. that family, even though, you know, like, okay, exactly. we probably, probably won't see each other, but on Instagram, right. but exactly. I know if right. I'm ever back in that city, we going to connect. Right. We gonna turn yes. Us and, yes. Yes. Right. right. And that's <laughs> happened. Even like, something super random like for example if another wife who i was you know friends with she was on a team and then they had storage here so then they left and then they're like hey we're no longer in philly but if you need our furniture like just let us know and you can yeah. have it so like you know little yeah. things like that and yeah. little connections like that are so valuable they really so is. valuable yeah mm -hmm. absolutely that's, that's a good side of social media that's for sure um, yes exactly I want to go back a little bit and talk about, because you you um, touched on this, uh, when you became pregnant with your little one yes. and um, uh -huh. you had to change the trajectory of your life. Um, Absolutely. In doing that, you decided to create this blog. And um, kudos to you for, you know, a lot of people when they go through certain things in their life, they don't know what to do. But I feel like you've always right. found an outlet or something that mm -hmm. you can exactly. do you know, to yeah. help yourself yes. to get through it. So you created the, exactly. the blog radliving.com, rad-living.com. Yes. Talk about yes. what that was. Uh huh. Yes. So just to start, so rad, um, at the beginning of our lives, rad is Rachel, me, A, Andre, D, Drayden, my son. So that's where we got Love rad living. Yeah. yeah. And I did not tell anyone I was pregnant. Um, I was really scared. My husband was a senior in college. Um, I was definitely scared of people's opinions. Um, mm -hmm. And so we just kept it really quiet. I would go to games and big t-shirts and hide and I just didn't yeah. want anyone to really know yet. And so I was like, how do I document one of the most important times of my life? without mm -hmm. blasting it on social media. And so what I did was I created this blog and I honestly, I didn't even um, advertise it until after I had my son. Mm -hmm. So I had already basically had it going for nine months and mm -hmm. I documented, it was first just to document my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the draft came and my husband did not get drafted, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use this to document what life is like on the other side of the NFL, the side yeah. that you don't see on TV, the yeah. side where people yes. aren't drafted, where people aren't, you know, getting guaranteed contracts, where their their day to day mm -hmm. life in the NFL is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it became a mom blog mixed with the behind the scenes of an NFL partner. So smart. And such yeah. a great idea. It really is. Thank because you. You have that to look back on. That's just going to live there forever. Mm -hmm. And even your kids, like that's exactly. really cool to, to think to do that so young. Yes. No, totally. And I, even sometimes now, like I'll be on my phone and like I'll go on and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot we were in Detroit living on a <laughs> blow up mattress in an apartment. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I just look at it like, oh, we've came a long way. And it kind of right. just, you know, just constantly reminding me that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So talk okay. about now that you are in Philly. You've been there for two mm -hmm. years now, right? Yes, yes. Got a little longevity now. A little bit, right? <laughs> talk about your experience in Philly. We already know you, oh. had, got, you guys were on the winning streak. And you guys, you've been doing amazing. You're number one in your division. How does that feel? Yes, doing very well. Um, 
it's kind of weird because my husband and I, we don't really come from winning programs, you know, in college. And even, <laughs> she said, we don't know how to win yet or right. how to be in the like, winning environment. Right. So it's a little different. It kind of brings on a whole different set of like stresses mm-hmm. and anxiety because you're like, oh man, we're going into week nine. We can't lose to the commanders. Uh, we're going into week 10. We can't lose to Indy. Like, but I think that aside from that, it's kind of mm-hmm. like setting a standard. Yeah. And I like that. And I yeah. see it in the way my husband goes about his day. I see it in the way he goes to work. Like there's just a different standard that they've set for themselves. And I love it. Um, and it also kind of puts into perspective, like playoffs and Super Bowl is kind of, you know, ringing above our head and it's like, they can really make this happen. Yeah. Um, and so as a partner, I'm just kind of, you know, trying my, my best to be positive, trying my best to be a good support system, but um, being undefeated, you kind of think that it would be, you know, oh, we can we can relax. No, it's yeah. kind of the opposite. It's a yeah. little bit, there's a little bit more anxiety and stress there. Yeah. Like you go undefeated for a few weeks and then all of a sudden everybody turned into exactly. when we faced them, it's the Super Bowl. Yes. So everybody's scrappy, exactly. everybody going 120%. Be like, where was yes. this energy like, for wait, everybody else? Right. Right. Playoffs are in me. eight weeks. Like, hold on. It's <laughs> right. so true. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I do have a a question. When you think about just um, expectations that we place, whether it be on ourselves or whether we place them on our families um, and you kind of see a vision or see a goal like in front Mm -hmm. of you, but it don't, sometimes it don't actually shake out. We can talk about whether it's your husband's um, NFL career or even you and the decision to, okay, well now mom, I can't play ball or I can play ball, but dang, I got to leave now. Like, how do you, how do you um, balance or like bounce back from those types of, I'm going to say losses for lack of a better term, but just like, no, I love, no, I love hearing you say balance because that's something that I feel like I've learned in the last two years is that balance to me, not every day. And am I going to be the best mom? Not every day. Am I going to be the best wife? But I feel like when you're looking at it, you know, in a month, like, was I a good mom this week? Yeah. You know, I was maybe not every single day, but when you look at it long-term, I'm like, yeah, I was. And when I talk about, you know, the ups and downs that we've been through and how to balance that and how to bounce back, kind of, like I said, like, we just look long-term, like, was this a good year? Um, maybe not. Like, did we have to move around a lot? Yeah, but we made it through. Mm. And I feel like that's where we kind of find our balance. Um, even now, like with my life in general, the first couple months of us being in Philly, I wasn't working out much. I wasn't eating clean. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of just focusing on momming. My son was starting preschool. I was nervous. Um, and even being a wife, like I was like, look, you're going to have to do meal prep service because I'm not cooking. I'm just focused on being mom right now. And um, I feel like I have found a way, you know, to balance that. Like first two months, you know, I wasn't good at everything else, but I was a good mom. And like right now I'm back in my fitness journey. I'm, you know, getting more help. I'm having a nanny. So maybe I'm not as hands on of a mom right now. I'm getting help, but I'm taking care of myself. So that's how I feel like I find balance in different seasons of my life. I hope that makes sense. That makes 100% (laughs) complete sense. I mean, it just puts everything in perspective. And it's great that you're Mm -hmm. in tuned with what you need in those moments. And you always reflect back so that you can reassess what you need to do. You know, yes, exactly. A, a lot Absolutely. of people they struggle with that. They don't they don't mm-hmm. reassess, they don't take a step back and figure out what they need, what their family needs to your point of like, you know what, I don't have time to cook, so I'm gonna do these meals. Get these yes. meals in, I'm good. You know, exactly. I I I need to take care of me now. It's not yes. always about the kids. I gotta remember to fill my cup first. So like Thank all you. of those yes. things are beautiful that you found that out at just twenty seven years old, girl. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm going on this is week three of eating clean and getting in the gym, putting my daughter in daycare at the gym, taking my son to preschool. So, and I'm feeling better. I noticed that when I give myself more time, I feel better. So I'm able to be better for them. So true. And it's so yep. important. Yes. And then you you talk about being a mom. I remember, I think you were talking about it in your blog. You talked about yes. being a mom for the first time and trying yeah. to figure it out. And oh. let's be clear, all of us are lost in the beginning. We don't what? know what oh, we're yeah. doing. I don't care. We are guessing. It don't matter how okay. many books we read. Yes. It don't listen. Yes. What it's is the difference funny. between that being a mom yeah. the first time and now having uh-huh. two? 
Um, it's kind of funny. I think like putting it in football terms. Uh-huh. So m- mom life. Rookie I'm season. Your- <laughs> yes, there we go. Yes. <laughs> so my rookie year as a mom was rough, mainly because <laughs> I had so many things thrown at me. And mm-hmm. I was just like, how do I do this? Um, but now looking back, I'm on year four of motherhood and my expectations are a little less, but in a positive yes. way. Yep. Um, I'm like, did they eat too many fruit snacks today? Yeah. But that's all right. They you know, alive. It, Look, they, they're alive. okay. Look. They're going to be okay. <laughs> and with baby number one, I wasn't like that. I was like, okay, did he eat three meals today? Were they all nutritious? You know, things like that. Did I bathe him every single day? Did I do this and this and this? And I was like, I stressed myself. <laughs> she said, did I bathe him every he, single day? And had me think right. about those, those parents right. that don't bathe their kids daily. <laughs> right. And I was just like, and he's fine. And with my daughter now and... It's kind of nice. Like I let her be a lot more independent, uh, a lot more independent than I was than I let my son be. You know, at that age, at the toddler phase, two years old, and I feel like it makes me a lot more sane to give them more independence. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. So that's what I've learned from my rookie year to year four in motherhood is just giving them more independence. I agree. I, I really figured that out. I think with my second son too. I feel like with yeah. my first, I would just, I had to go by all these rules that I imparted in my own mind and head. Exactly. What you realize to your point, you're only stressing yourself out. Yes. You're only stressing exactly. yourself out. But when you just yep. learn to relax a little bit and yes. it's okay to let your kids figure it out. Like you realize they're going to be all right. Yes. They're going to be all right. Yes. And it's like, even if they're tall, like it's good. And like, you know, my little, my child development background, I'm like, okay, autonomy, they're figuring this out on their own. This is part of their development. Like, let's go. They got this. (laughs) And, and, and you're fostering that self independence in them where Mm -hmm, they feel like they can go do it on their own. They're not always looking at you or seeing it, you know what I mean? It it is. Exactly. It's a thing. For sure. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you think about, Rachel, and the, at these different like pivotal and milestone moments, whether it's becoming a business owner, becoming a wife, a yeah. mother, other things, what's uh-huh. one thing about yourself that you miss most? That Ooh. yeah, that you no longer are there. That's due a to good evolution? question. I I would definitely say I miss athlete Rachel the most mm. because I feel like at that point of my life I was so. I was a lot more focused. Yeah. I was a lot more disciplined mm-hmm. just with life. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an everyday, day-to-day set schedule. Mm-hmm. The only thing I had to worry about was getting to practice, getting uh-huh. to my lifts, getting to school. So I would definitely say I miss that. I, I do. And basketball mm-hmm. was such a big part of my life. It was mm-hmm. my main outlet. Um, yeah. Now I'm still learning like how like what kind of outlets I can have for my stress. I'm still figuring that out, you know, as a 27 year old mom. Whereas when I was playing basketball and I was an athlete, when I had stress, I knew what my outlet was. It was basketball. So now that I don't have, yes. So now that I don't have that, that's one thing that I'm still trying to figure out and still Mm -hmm. trying to learn is like, what are good outlets for me, for my stress and for my self care. And I'm Mm -hmm. still not there yet. I still don't have an answer. It's okay though. You'll figure it out. Like yes. for me, obviously I don't run track anymore, but I right. what I realized is for me for self-care, working out was like a stress mm-hmm. reliever for me. And, and so that's, yes. So to absolutely. your point of like playing basketball in college when I ran track in college and I it was a stress reliever to me whether I was lifting, whether I was absolutely. running, whatever I was doing. So I knew yes. that I needed that because I would find myself getting just like so cranky and just irritated. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm like, you know, I didn't work out. I need to go work out. And it just like yes. releases those endorphins and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm ready. So I was like, I see the light. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. obviously we can't do what we did in college, but right. you know, just finding things that I like to do Absolutely. to mm-hmm. work out like boxing or right. whatever it is. I, yeah. It does make and such even a difference. Stimming off of what you just said. That's another thing is like, I'm still learning. Like, what do I like to do outside of basketball? Yeah. Because for so long, for so long, basketball and travel dictated my day to day, dictated what I loved. And now that I don't have that, I'm still trying to learn. Like, okay, like, what's a hobby? Like, I have time for <laughs> hobbies now. Like, yeah. what do I like to do? And so I think that to once again to answer your question, Tia, I'm still learning. One, my mm-hmm. stress outlets, and two, like. 
what do I enjoy? Mm. And I'm still learning that. Yeah. Still kind of dibble dabble. I'm, I'm reading now and I enjoy that. Yeah. So trying to get more into reading, but definitely, definitely still learning that part hey. about myself. I feel like every you now and then you real. should roll up to 24 hour fitness and like, just be like, hey, can I get on your team? And then just show them boys <laughs> how it's done. You know what? I've thought about it. So I I go to Lifetime Fitness yes. and they have like, they have like a, uh, like a pickup league. Yep. And I asked them if it was co-ed. They said it was. Do um, it. I think they have a league like the end of winter and we'll still be here. So I'm going to see like what it's about. I, and I probably will. I, so and like set up your camera in a thing. corner and record <laughs> record oh, just yeah. shooting the ball in their eyeballs just it, like, would be so cool i would die yeah watching that okay if this happens i'm gonna tag you guys Please. no absolutely <laughs> absolutely because actually they're at la fitness um a lot of the former players are in that league right the same little oh, city to city okay yes league. They won. Like, they take it so, so cool. serious. So I know you're going to go so out there and serious. show out. And like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know if I take it that serious. <laughs> I think that they to. would be shocked, Cause, though. Because you're a woman so stepping too. on the court, they're going to try you. So you don't have no, to. No, you're right. You're right. I'm going to have to be serious. <laughs> they gonna I, I don't play you. about that. I don't play about getting tested. <laughs> right. They're going to try you. Okay. So let's switch games or switch, switch, <laughs> switch directions a little bit and play a little game. Okay. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, so this is called the two-minute drill. So we're going to give you like a this or that, or we'll give you the other, which is kind of like a fill in the blank. So Love it. Okay, let's um, do it. All right, we are ready. Kay. Pay for Twitter or leave Twitter? Pay for Twitter. But, okay. <laughs> What's all, all, my, all, my, all my Eagles homies are on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most embarrassing song you will admit to liking publicly? Ooh, um... Rockstar by Nickelback. Mm. Okay, okay. I know every word. That is so <laughs> Okay, if you were given a okay. billboard in Times Square, Ooh. what would you put on it? Mm. I would honestly put... It would have to be a quote for moms. So whenever a mom is driving through Times Square and she's struggling and she's exhausted having a rough day... I'd uh -huh. put like a picture of me with my kids, messy bun and all, with a really good mom quote. I don't know what quote yet, but it would be a good mom quote. Like something to help her get through the day. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. What invention do you wish you could take credit for? Oh, the hot comb. <laughs> <laughs> what I used for my edges before I came on. I love it. I was not expecting that one. <laughs> me either. <laughs> I'm thinking ring doorbell. No, no, I don't know. No, no, the hot comb. Amazon. So no. Hot comb, no, right. baby. Hey, yep. That's about as real as it gets, y'all. <laughs> what what always, and I mean always, makes you laugh? I would have to say my husband. He's a funny guy. I love He's a real that. funny guy. And I'm a lot more serious. So a lot of people, when they see me around him, they're like, oh, I didn't know she was that, like, you know, funny like, and okay. outgoing. Like, he definitely, he makes me laugh. <laughs> Shout out to her. What, right. yes. <laughs> what fictional person do you wish were actually real? Ooh, Great Gatsby. Mm. Oh. Jay Gatsby, yeah. I'm so fascinated by that book. Like, I'm like, he has to be a real person somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's something you're good at but hate doing? Ooh, that is a great question. What am I? <laughs> um, I am great at planning vacations, Okay, but I do not like doing it because I'm so exhausted by the time I get on my vacation. <laughs> uh, like I'm such a planner. I do itineraries. Yes. I break everything down. I got cost breakdowns and I love doing it. But then once I get on my vacation, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I've seen the yeah. picture of this resort 20 million times. Uh -huh. I know. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get better at that. Not, yeah, but yeah, same. I <laughs> am the same. One. Okay. Yes. So, what's next for Rachel? Ooh, what you know? I'm just gonna talk about this season of my life. Mm -hmm. What's next for me is I'm trying to get in the best shape that I have ever been in post baby. That mm -hmm. is all I'm worried about right now. That's where my yeah. focus is. 
Um, and that's kind of all I see right now is just like my fitness journey, getting back on track after being an athlete, having two babies mm -hmm. somewhat back to back. Mm -hmm. I don't plan on having more. And I finally feel like it's like my turn to feel more Me comfortable time. in my skin and mm -hmm. yeah. And just get back what I feel like was kind of lost. And yeah, that's my, that's my goal right now. The things women go through, girl, that was the realest answer ever. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Rachel, I know that people are going to enjoy listening to this because you've said so some amazing excited. things. If you if they want to get a hold of you, where yes. do they find you? Perfect. Okay, two ways to get a hold of me. I'm on Twitter a lot. I'm always talking back to fans, talking back in a good way, not like, you know, have an attitude. But I mean, it's okay like if you talk <laughs> so a little something yeah, every now and then. Yeah. But yes, I'm always interacting with people on Twitter. So my Twitter is at Rachel West. Um, that's my um what do you call it maiden name, maiden name. there we go i was like i forgot what that word it's <laughs> r-a-c-h-o-l-w-e-s-t at rachel west and then my instagram is also at rachel west r-a-c-h-o-l-w-e-s-t um you could shoot me a dm you could shoot me a, a tweet on twitter but i'm always responding i'm always checking stuff and yeah that's how you can get get yeah. a hold of me i'll be <laughs> sure to um drop links in our show notes Perfect. Thank, okay. thank you so much for joining us. You were fantastic. Yes. Thank you guys. Appreciate you both. Shout out to Rachel Sachere for just blessing us with all the little gems, all the things that she's done in such a small, short time as being a mother. Um, it was just very inspiring to hear her story. Only 27 years old. Listen, and, and y'all, I'm going to be transparent with y'all. It has been <laughs> the ghetto recording her. Okay. <laughs> Because I was late, but she Beautiful. was so amazing. She tapped yeah. in, um, dropping jewels and gems. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, you know, I really enjoy and I admire the fact that she was very in tune with rediscovering who she was outside of mm -hmm. basketball, outside of her husband, outside of her um, having her son early. Yes. Right. Like, I feel like I didn't I wasn't getting in tune, you know, until much later. So. Thanks, Rachel, yeah. for coming. Yes. And thanks for sharing your truths about, you know, how it mm -hmm. really is for some players and their journeys through the NFL. I think a yeah. lot of people see the TV, the glitz and the glamour, and they don't, they don't understand the journey. So I appreciate her vulnerability there. So absolutely. All right. Well, that's it, y'all. Until next time. Oh, I always mess this up. Good God. All right. Sorry, Brian. All right. Well, that's the show for the latest on the Inside Lines podcast. Make sure to follow us on Inside Lines Podcast on both Instagram and Facebook. And you can also listen online at InsideLinesPodcast.com and make sure to leave us your feedback, your recommendations for guests to come on, topics you want to cover, or questions you have for us at SpeakPipe.com forward slash Inside Lines. Until then, leave it all out on the field. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.